This is Richard back at you, all the way from Virginia, guys. Can you believe that? They want it done right, for sure. We got Joe's Crown Vic in the house, 06 model, 4.6 liter. No reverse, guys. Said he started going out a while back, and he kept driving it for a while, and he just couldn't take it anymore. So he decided to bring it all the way to Amarillo to have it done. Now, we're also going to be doing his pull vehicle that he's pulling this car with on a trailer. So we're going to do a double whammy for him. We're going to rebuild the Crown Vic and the 4L60E that's in his pickup, too. That way, when he goes back, he don't have to worry about anything anymore. But you can look in the pan on this one here. You can see the magnet's about twice the size as it should be. A lot of material, and this thing stinks. What we do is we pull the four-wheel drive fi uh, filter off leave it off and we put a flat pan, two wheel drive a pan on the vehicle. That way we can get it on our jack. It'll be flat, we just set it right on there and it won't have that tilt, tilt teetering uh, back and forth uh, with that uh, deep pan. So this vehicle here is from Virginia, got quite a bit of rust. I guess they used a lot of salt or something down there on the roads. So we're kind of struggling getting the bolts and stuff out on it. So Trent's really in, had to put a lot of PB blaster and all that type stuff on it. Cody's been struggling over here on the cooler lines. They're all rusted up too. So one thing good about this one is if you can get the starter off, you're ahead of everything. Yeah, and I'm telling you, we did get the starter off, so we was lucky yeah. there. So you can kind of see the dry shaft, what it looks like, the rust on it all the way. So, boys are hard at it, definitely. Like I said, we're gonna pull it, we're gonna get this one done, deliver it to him in the morning, then we're going to uh, pull the 4L60E out, and then we're gonna get on in and get, the, get it done too. So it's gonna be a really nice uh, job when we get them done. So y'all stay tuned. This is Richard back at you guys. We got Joe's 06 Crown Victory in the house. Really, really nice car all the way from Virginia. Can you believe that? All the way from Virginia. Annie, are you hanging out? She sure is, guys. On every job we do, she's right beside us. But like I said, we got Joe's 06 Crown Victoria in the house all the way from Virginia. Uh, the problem he's having with it is a no reverse problem. He says uh, when it's cold, it works a little bit. As it warms up, it just slowly goes away. But it keeps getting worse and worse. Now he trailered this in on a trailer, and then he brought in a uh, 4L60, I believe it was a um, 2006 maybe, five, uh, Chevrolet pickup that he's pulling uh, this with, and he's gonna have us do that too. It's got 202,000, 220,000 miles on the truck, so while he's here, he wants to get that addressed too. So that's gonna be good, we're gonna be doing two of them. We're gonna get this one done first, should take us a couple days. Uh, he's going to be here probably a week. Uh, we get this one done, give it back to him. He'll swap and give us a pickup. And then they're going to go see our canyon or whatever they can do and enjoy it here. So, But anyway, uh, no reverse. Now in this uh, unit here, they make two different converters for this train. They make a, a, a what we call an F60 and F63. This is a, an F60. This is a, the bigger style converter. The, the distance between the lugs here is greater. Where the earlier the F60 style, uh, the uh, converter is uh, uh, narrow. Or excuse me, the F63 is narrower. So the F60 is wide. The F60 is narrower. So the converter is a, a tremendous a lot smaller. You can almost tell just by pulling it out of the box when what they look like. So, but you can see this lid here looks really bad really dark you don't very seldom do we see wear on the converter hubs on these things I mean they just got them really a good alignment so we just don't see wear now you can also see the pan now this is the four wheel or it's not a four wheel drive pan but it's a two wheel drive deep pan uh, we switched the pan over to a, a two wheel drive pan that way we can get it out of the vehicle on the jack real easy but you can see all the material on the magnet all the material all the way through the pan so now it's been serviced before because you can uh, tell that uh, uh, there was no uh, little plug in the pan. A lot of these when the pan's never been off before they'll have a little yellow plug in the pan. 
Yeah, that tells us there. And we actually see that more often than you would think. Yeah, more than you should. Yeah. Definitely. That just tells us that it's never been serviced. Now we got some mud daubers here. Ooh, they're still in there. Somebody's still home. Yep, they're still in there. Look at that. Wow. That's so gross. <laughs> Pretty cool. But anyway, guys, on the AOD, tranny, the early AOD and the early AODE, uh, the bushing and the seal was smaller. When they went to the 470Ws, the 475s, they made, uh, put a bigger seal here, bigger bushing. Now you can tell this seal here is a uh, yellow color, and that's how you can identify it. And rusty. And the other uh, is, will be a red seal. 350 seal is basically the same thing, 4060, stuff like that. They use the same seal. So, we have no governor back here. No check ball for it, no snap ring groove, anything like that for it even. And we have our output speed sensor. Let me get this out of the way first. So this here is our neutral safety switch. This is what lets you start it in park. Turns your backup lights on, stuff like that. This is what your shifter lever moves. Now you can see here, I'm going to turn this just a little bit. You see that line right there and that line right there? What you do if you ever replace this switch, you just take and line them up like that. Put your shifter in neutral. Put that on there. Line that, those two lines together and tighten it down. That's how you line that up. Pretty simple. And we have our input speed sensor here. Our output speed sensor here. See the difference in the links. Got a lot of metal on there. Now these sensors, this one here reads right off the back of the output shaft and the outer ring gear and stuff for the planetary. This one here physically goes through a shell. We have a this shell right here is actually it's a steel here but it will, the magnet will not stick to it here. And this sensor goes all the way through the case, comes up beside this right here like that, and then reads the drum on the inside spinning in here. So that's why it's not metal. So this reads all the way through that drum and then counts the drum spinning inside, which is the forward drum. So I'll show you when I get this apart. Like I said, we put a two-wheel drive flat pan on here and leave the filter off that way we can just take it out of the vehicle real easy. And we'll do the same thing. I'll set this on there, clean it up, put it on there, give it back to them, and they'll put it in. Then they'll put the original pan, the right filter that goes on there. Now you can see here your filter O-ring. Anytime you do a service, you always want to take that out of there because your new filter has it on there already, so you don't want to double stack them, okay? Now also, this has no wiring uh, like your early style does. It has a circuit board that comes through and hooks all your solenoids. And we have our pressure control solenoid here, our lockup solenoid here, and we have our shift solenoids here. And we have our temp sensor right here. Now the wiring style, you know, the, the sensor uh, is in the harness. But uh, these do go bad. I've seen them go bad, cause problems. Now we have two alignment bolts right here. They're long and they got a shank on them. So when you tighten the, get everything torqued on your valve body, when you stick it back on there, these pins will actually set in the case and align the valve body. 
very simple. Now our bracket that holds our pressure control solenoid right here, you want to make sure you get that tucked in there right. See how that solenoid kind of sticks out and you can see the filter? That sets down in that groove right there. So you want to make sure that that isn't sticking out and then you stick it right in there where that filter is. Because it can be done guys, I mean I'm telling you. I've seen guys do it. So just make sure you get it all the way in there and then put it in the, like that. Okay. Simple. Yep. Got your park detent spring here. My tools are scattered. Unfortunately, got tools going everywhere. But we'll get the valve body off there real quick. Now we are putting a transgo shift kit in this. Uh, these trannies have pressure problems and stuff like that, and the kit corrects that. It corrects a lot of stuff. Corrects the lube circuit problems. All that stuff. Of course, you can see you have long and short bolts. All the ones on the aluminum part are short. The ones on the metal are going to be taller. So if you get that right, you're doing good. Then put your two bolts that I was telling you about that... Uh, guide everything put them in there but they go in there when you put this plate on when you torque it all together they'll just be sticking out the other side so if I missed anything okay we have a converter filter right here that's so down in there if you left it out I don't it, you know if you left it out when you found it on a bench, you were done. You didn't have to want to put it in. I guess it wouldn't hurt nothing, but uh, we always put them in. Now this little connector here, we very seldom ever see fluid in here. There is an O-ring right here. Get my screwdriver under it. Right there, you need to replace. Make sure you put this in there first. Because once you put your valve body on, this will not go in there because it sets under the valve body. So you want to make sure you put that in there first. Now you notice here how we have these two plates. We do not have one here. They got rid of that after so many years. FOD had it. Early AODs had it. And then they got rid of it in later years. All these bolts here are the same length. So your gaskets you want to match up really good in your kit. Because you do have an upper and lower. Just match them up. Make sure you get the right uh, year on your overhaul kit too. So. Transtar can help you out with all that. Just tell them your year, your VIN number, and they can hook you up. Now we do have another filter right here in the valve body. A little bitty flat one. Now that will come in your overhaul kit. So if you don't, don't lose don't it. Lose throw it. it in the pile with everything else. <laughs> yeah, just don't lose it. Just hang on to it. And then you got a another piece right here. And you get, I'm a flip it over to get out and show you, but you have your check balls here. I mean, some of it's floating on me, kind of roll it out so you can kind of see it better. There we go, now we can see them. We have one here, 
here, here. That tiny here you can see it. There's one, okay. <laughs> here, 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 here. There's one here and here and here. And this one here just fell out of the truck. Right there, it goes right there. Like that. Now this guy asked me if I got over all the fluid and stuff that you've been getting on me. Did you get over it, Teresa? I got over it. She got over it. And this there's this piece here. Now this will go down in there either direction. It doesn't matter. It's got a seal on each end. So pretty simple. Like I said, your shift kit, your transgo kit, you're going to be doing a lot of uh, modifications here, drilling a hole here, uh, different valve, different spring. I mean, a lot of different things you're going to be doing to the valve body. Just pay close attention to the instructions. It's pretty simple to do at home. But we definitely will make a, a better tranny out of it. Now we'll get over here and get our third gear accumulator out of the way. Now your shift kit will also come with a spacer that goes in here to tighten this up usually. Like I said, if not, you can put four or five pennies in here and stack that up and even firm it up and give you a little bit firmer third gear. Always replace these pistons here. Uh, they're bad about shrinking, uh, just peeling off, stuff like that. Our kit, I'm fixing to show you here in a second uh, and what all we replace in these. And that's a lot. Now we're going to get our reverse servo cover out. Now this is where our problem we're going to be looking at, because like I say, lost reverse. We're going to be looking at this cover. See how hard this is right here? Look at that seal break. Okay. This is... Uh, I don't know. You were supposed to put on your suit, Tracy. You told me you are going to. But you told me that you wouldn't get me dirty either, so uh, I trusted well. you. Well... <laughs> okay guys, whenever this seal, these seals get hard on these pistons right here, they just start leaking really bad. And, and next thing you know, you start burning up your band and clutches and stuff like that. And this is a really good uh, case of it right here, I'm going to show you. This seal is so hard and shrunk in the bore, there's just, you can rock it back and forth. I mean, there's just no, no tension to the seal at all. So I bet I can come in here and let's see if I can just break this off. Look at that. Just break that seal right off. That's how hard that plastic has gotten. Same way with the cap. See, I can just break it right off. This cap's really hard too. So once this happens right here, your, your reverse band's gonna go away. I mean, it, it, it's doomed. There ain't nothing you can do about it. Now you could pull the valve body on this unit and put those pistons in and correct that problem before you burn the band up along with all the rest of them because there is uh, a few more uh, that we change out too. So you got your reversed servo bonded pistons and cover. You have your third gear servo piston bonded which is this one here and then you have your overdrive servo Stuff coming up here. These gloves are slippery, slippery for some reason today. That fluid might have something in there too. Don't smell an additive, and it really don't smell burnt or anything like that. But these covers, this cover right here, is another cover that we replace on every one we do. These are bad about leaking, and they're bad about breaking too, just like the other one. Now your shift kit. It's going to come with uh, different springs for this and a spacer and all that type of stuff. So, but you want to get in here and feel this and see if this is going to break off just like the other ones, how hard it is. This here actually has some softness to it. That cover there and piston was just solid brittle. There was no, no saving it. And even this one here, you, know, you can feel a little bit of drag like it's still got some tension to it. It feels a little soft, but still it's not worth putting it back in there same way with this cover. This cover gets hard and starts leaking. 
I mean, it'll leak around the snap ring and everything, and then it, it doesn't work. It causes major issues. So, and we're going to get our overdrive servo off here, too. Come on. Now the same way, there's a seal, hardened molding seal right here that's bonded on here. This thing is just hard too, see. I don't think it's hard enough to chip off like this uh, reverse one was, but it's still a lot firmer than what it should be. So that's your overdrive. Okay, now we're going to get to pull our pressure control seal note out real quick. You have to pull this cotter key out right here. Roll pin, whatever you want to call it. Okay, once you get that out, don't ever wash the case with it in there, because then it makes it twice as hard to get that out. Okay. Now we're going to take our, get our pressure control solenoid out, get our 7 8 wrench in here, screwdriver. We're going to loosen that up. The main thing is, when you put this back together, you want to make sure this lever is sticking up. See this lever? It's sticking this way. If you put it on facing down, because it's easy to lay this down, you get busy, especially if you're a newbie and you've never done it before. Um, it's easy to lay it down, don't realize, oh man, how'd that go again? So, get the nut off there. So your lever can go this way too, accidentally. And then you can't, you got to pull the pin out, all that stuff to change it. Just kind of put it back in there, put the nut back on it. That way, when you put it back together, you go, oh, okay, it goes like that. Pretty simple. Okay, now you do have a seal here. Get that out. And then you have your pressure control solenoid here. Now, I think I moved that bracket. You can see right here where that solenoid gets behind here and grabs that right there. Or puts it like this, excuse me. Like that. You can easily get it in here. Just like that, but it goes in there like that. So, it's, I mean, I'm telling you it happens, so. Now you have your park linkage stuff here. We'll leave this in here when we wash it in the case. Got our 10 millimeter pump bolts out. Now you don't have to seal these bolts. They do have a, like a, a glue on them. But we very seldom ever see these bolts leak. Now, anytime you uh, change the bushings in one of these trannies, these bushings have directionals. Uh, some of the grooves go straight down and kind of wind. Some of them loop down and come back up. So they're really critical on these bushings on where you put them in here. Now, on this uh, bonded piston here, you notice it has a weep hole right here. You always want that little weep hole to face to the top of the tranny. So when you put it in, this is the bottom, your suction and your pump side, you want it at the very top. So basically like that. 
Okay, that way it lubricates your clutches, keeps uh, oil up top. Oil hat clutches have to be cooled, believe it or not. They have to have some type of oil on them to keep them just floating along. Now this seal here feels really hard too. All the way around the seals feel hard. Now you can see this new bonded piston how the seals stick out really far. How they're going to really fit tight. Well this one here, I mean it's, it's laid over. They're all gone. Mm-hmm. So that's why you want to replace all your seals, your bonded pistons. If you can get an overhaul kit with bonded pistons, get them all. Put them in there. All your uh, servos and stuff too. And then we have our pump gears and pump assembly, pump body. Now look at it really close too. So we got new gears going here if everything looks good. Don't see really no wear. Some scuffing probably from just the trash that's been running. But nothing really major. Of course we have our pump stator. Now your kit could come with different forward rings here. But all your reverse rings right here are going to always be the same. They're going to be metal. But your, these could be plastic or metal. They could be all kinds of different ways. Uh, your shift kit could even have its variation of type of rings they want you to put back in here. So Sometimes these rings, when I take them off, they'll even have a wire ring under them to keep the ring pushed out. So you want to look for that type of stuff. Pump stator looks really nice too. Now you can see this bushing right there, how it goes down and kind of slices downward at an angle. Can you see that, Teresa? Yeah. See that right mm -hmm. there? Well, if you get that bushing that goes down in there, I'm going to show you the new one. It hoops down and comes back up. See? So this is the new bushing that goes down in there, the one that does that. Okay? But the bushing that goes in the other end, it's a straight drop at an angle, see? Mm -hmm. So you don't want to get your bushings mixed up on where they go. Uh, now we have our intermediate uh, return piston spring here. Uh, this sets down in here and all this does is push the piston back, the clutch back off and it keeps it from coming back on. Any type of cross leaks or anything like that. But it also keeps it from, uh, controls the shift feel even a little bit. So all kinds of stuff. Now, right here, if you notice, we have an anti-clunk spring I'm going to pull out. Get my flashlight so that way you can kind of see where that sets down in there. You can see it right here. Can you see that, guys? It sets right down in there like that. So... And what they did is they, they put that in there to keep these steels from rattling so bad in the bore of the case. Uh, when they added the diode sprag, this style, listen. Hear that clicking? When they added that style of sprag, I think it made these, I mean, it just made them noisy. So they put this in there to try to just keep everything a little tighter and quieten down a little bit. Throw it in your pile. Throw it in my pile. Your intermediate clutches. We have our overdrive band. Now this is the widest band they make for the AODE. The FOD has a really narrow band. Probably about, uh, uh, take a quarter of this off and you'll look at it. Okay. Okay, we got some destruction here. Let's see if I can get this apart. Okay. Now what we have, we have a bearing right here that keeps these two separated, like that. But we have a major reverse clutch problem here. <laughs> so we're probably going to have a couple areas 
that we're having problems with reverse. Not so much down on the band, but actually the reverse clutch. Those are all fried. Oh, goodness. Look at that, guys. What caused this whole problem was that oh. this bevel plate broke. It this is a good. common problem right here. Mm -hmm. Once this happens, uh, it just starts wadding things up. So this is a very common problem for these to break. We have a big, this snap ring right here is a really strong wavy snap ring. Get that out of there. Oh, come on. There we go. You can see a really strong, wavy, thick snap ring. But it sets down in there and holds that bevel down in there. Now you can see here some of our rubber seal that's been blowed out of, around the piston here. See if I can get that blowed out of there. There we go. the chunk out of the seal. There's another seal in here. Now these drums do take seal installers. You start messing with this training here, you better have the right tools and stuff to put these seals in a lot of these drums, especially the early design ones. The FODs and stuff like that, you better have that kit. If not, you'll you'll chip a seal every time, take a bite out of it. So, but what we need to do is basically go over this drum, look and see if it's destroyed. If it looks good, we can come in here and scotch bright all this area here where the seal runs. Scotch bright this inner part here where the seal runs too. Come in at 180 grit our drum all the way around. Come in here and put a new sprag in here. Pretty simple. New bushings, top and bottom, but you really want to look in here for any type of seal wear. Because we do see seal wear on these drums here too. Right here. See how close that seal is running towards the edge right there? Mm -hmm. So it's just barely, it's in a good spot, but it's best right there, isn't it? You want to check the clearances on this tranny for sure and make sure it's not moving around a whole lot. And we have our forward drum seals here. There's two of them. You have to have a sizer to put them on. And then you have your forward clutch. Now this tranny here, I uh, talked about how uh, they're bad about high line pressure problems. They break things. They crack. Uh, one of the biggest issues they have is blowing this snap ring groove plumb out of this drum. It'll bust it all the way around. You can just take this top piece off or it'll be sticking out like this. Forward clutch will all be burned up. But that's from high pressure. That's so. We have our forward clutch here. You can already see it's pretty much flaked off. There's not much left of it here. Now you do have a big wave that goes in there up against the flat steel. Then you end up all the way to the top of the. Very simple. Okay, here's our shorty shaft. Now this locks it right to the back of the third gear, or the input shaft, and the third gear drum. So what they did is on the AODs they had a long one that went all the way from the back to the front and locked into the back of the cover on the torque converter. And when it went into the third gear, it went into direct drive. Well, this one here, they locked third gear right into the back of the input shaft, like that. See. Now, when it goes in the it, when it goes in the lockup, it's going to be controlled by the computer and still have a lockup clutch. But that's how they added third gear to keep on going. I'm going to check these splines here for any type of wear.
Okay guys, you remember me talking about how uh, this sensor reads this shaft. Well you stick that in there like that and you're going to set this forward drum in there and it's going to set in here just like that and it's going to turn. And this long sensor right here, it's going to come in here and it's going to set in here like this and it's going to physically count that shaft right here. It's going to count these lugs. I don't know how you can get metal or how they can do that, but that's how that works. Pretty, pretty. pretty neat. So, but anyway, on these uh, shells right here, we always see a ton of wear on this gear right here. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can see the wear, you can see the wear, okay? Mm -hmm. We replace every one of these, and we also come in here and replace this bottom sun gear. You can always see the wear that starts in the very middle of the gear. Mm -hmm. Can you see that, Teresa? Yeah. You know, it's hard to see it. It's, they wear on one side more than the other, but we replace all these right here. Check this little bearing right here too, make sure it's in good shape. Pretty simple. And we're gonna get down in here and get this snap ring out of the center support and get it out. Now you notice they got the, this snap ring right here if you put it in the wrong place guys I'm going to show you something this speed sensor right here you're going to build this tranny and you're going to put this speed sensor in very last and when you put that speed sensor in very last you see how it stuck through that hole right there you see this snap ring right here if you put that snap ring in over this speed sensor right here when you push that speed sensor in you push the snap ring out of that groove and that snap ring pops out now right now the opening of the snap ring is right here and right here. But if you put it over that, I'm going to show you and just show you, you can do it real easy. Kinda. Now these do have an anti-clunk spring too, it's right here. I'm going to pop it out of there. There it is. It's an another anti-clunk spring on the center support. But what I'm going to do, see that sensor, I'm going to knock it out of the way and I'm just going to stick this in there. Because this will go in multiple directions, and you think it's right. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to push this speed sensor in. And when I bolt it down, look what it does. See? So if you, put the, if you don't put the opening here, you put that in there, and you tighten it down, look what it did. It pushed that snapper and plumb out of the case. So now, you, look at that blows right out and that's a, these are the last things you do when you build this tranny is you put new speed sensors in it so don't let that bite you because it, it'll, it'll definitely get you so let's get that snap ring back out of there just make sure the opening is with you like that You're like that not like that oh, pretty simple Okay, now we have a roller bearing down here in the case. It's got a lip on it that sits down in there like that, keeps it from moving, sits down there really nice. We have a snap ring that sits down in the case that the band sets on. Okay, and here we have our reverse band. And of course, there's nothing left of it. There's no material on the tips at all. Just totally gone. I figured this band would be the main issue uh, when I started taking the servos out and they were hard, hard and I could just break the tips off of them. But this is another issue we have right here. So I'll put a new band in it. Now we're going to get to our third gear clutch right here. Get close to the bearing right here. There's another hub. Have a bearing here, and we have a spacer. 
See that right there? The spacer goes down and sets against the snap ring. Holds the snap ring in, okay? Very simple. Okay, now on our third gear clutch, let's look at it. Sorry, Teresa. Kind of got me a little bit too. Here's our third gear clutch. Little tiny things. Little tiny things. So we have our drum. Now this drum here, guys, we replace every one of them. You, you, you just can't find good used ones at all. Uh, this spline right here gives us all kinds of issues. Okay. You can come over here and grab our brand new drum. And it's just night and day, the tightness. Night and day. So we replace every one of those drums there too. So you have your lower ring gear here. Where'd my other screwdriver go? I missed my little black small screwdrivers. I don't know what I did with them. I lost them, I guess. Get out this little one here, maybe. Here's the green one. The green one? Oh, oh, that's not, yeah. Now we have three sealing rings here that go in the back of the case. So you want to check your grooves, make sure there's no wear in the back of the case. And then we have two sealing rings here for your third gear clutch on this drum here. Okay, so you got to put new rings here, scotch bright everything up. You want to look at your ring gear. Both sides here, make sure there's no wear on either side. You got your planetary assembly. You want to look here for wear. Seeing a little there shininess. That anti clunk spring, when I looked at it in there, it wasn't really set in there right. It looked like whoever put it together didn't get it where it actually kept this from moving. So that could be an issue right there, is why that looks like that. Then we have our lower sprag assembly. I've never tried to put it in backwards. Just remember your roller, always your spring pushes your roller uphill. But you want to get in here and look at these gears too. Make sure there's no chip, any type of wear. But the main thing, this bushing right here has to be stepped. If you put that bushing flush, you're going to make tons of metal because the bearing that sets on there is, where'd it go? Is stepped. See that bearing, how it's stepped? It's got a land on it and it sets in there. So you make sure you put that bushing below flush and then set this on there and look at it and make sure it's not touching the bearing anywhere and then put a new bushing in it. So pretty easy. But I was wanting to show you guys if you've ever wondered how do you get the case bushing out of an FIOD. See that bushing down in there guys? That bushing right there. How do you get that bushing out of there? I'm going to show you how. And once you get the bushing out, you have to take a, a little bit of a grinder and get in there and clean up some areas where the factory put the bushing in. Because every time the factory put the bushing in, they shave the case a little bit and causes issues right there. Okay? But what I did is I've made a tool that I've had forever. I probably need to patent this. It's just a long, narrow extension that I've made a little hook on. You can see it here. And what it does, it lets it get the case part in here and then it gets right behind that bushing where I can come in here. Teresa, can you get that camera in there? Come on and shine it, face it that direction. Oh, I need to change sides. Yeah, change sides. I'm, Cause I'm gonna hit it that way, but I just wanna kinda see how I can stick that in there and get that below that and get in there where that bushing's at. Get my flashlight. Am I in the way? I, I, I can't tell if you can see, but 
Can you see it? Okay, I'll hold it right there. See that bushing? But this here, where I made it, will slide up and then come down and sets right on top of that bushing. Okay, now I'm going to take and I'm going to push that bushing out with a hammer. Oh, this is going to be dangerous. That bushing already started coming out. Look at that. Pushed it right out. That was the most simplest thing <laughs> to get that bushing out of that case right there by using this tool. And it's just enough hook on it where I can come in here and I can set that on top of that bushing right there and I can shove it out. If not, you can't get to that bushing. I, I don't know how other guys do it, but I've made this tool 35 years ago probably or longer and I've been using it ever since and it's the only thing I use this tool for. But once you get down in here, uh, you'll have to clean it up in here because you'll go along and feel some rough spots in here from the factory or even maybe where you scarred it a little bit. Clean that up good. That way when you put your new bushing in there, it doesn't distort the bushing and then make it hard uh, to get this piece down in there to, to make sure it fits good. So, pretty crazy guys. I mean, just a, a lot of work what it takes to do one of these uh, and to do it right. So you can kind of see here just the parts it takes even. You know, new clutches, steels, bushings, uh, your sun gear, your sun gear shell, your drum, your bands, all your bonded pistons, your overdrive bonded piston, all that type of stuff. Shift kit, nice clutches, everything like that to make this tranny work really nice for Joe. So we're going to get this one in, uh, get, him, get this one going. That way Joe can go see Amarillo and cruise around and stuff like that. Maybe go out to the canyon or something this week. But he's dropping off his pickup. We're going to get right on it too. That way he can hook up to the trailer, put this car back on, and go right back to Virginia. Guys, don't forget to subscribe. Teresa, thank you for recording. And y'all have a great day.